firstly, thank you so much for having me in this interview. Uh, my name is Kulekani. Uh, my surname is Yakobi. Uh, I've recently been awarded a PhD in Computer Science and Information Systems at Nelson Mandela University. So to reflect you know, on my background, uh, I grew up uh, in Rustenburg. I was born in Houston. I was raised there. Uh, so I was raised by, mostly by a single parent, which is my father. So we grew up there because my father was working that side. Timbal Platinum Mine. So that's where I grew up uh, with my brothers, uh, my three brothers. I'm the third one from the two older brothers. So there's the last one after me. Uh, we grew up there together. Uh, my mother left me when I think I was around 11 years. Yeah, she passed on. Uh, so we grew in the upbringing of being, having a single father, a single parent, so to say. So we grew up there, uh, so I did my primary that side, uh, did my secondary school that side, so you would have a feel of a uh, rusting bank. We've got townships, so I grew up in a township. Uh, I passed my grade 12, I was doing commerce. Yeah, accounting, economics, and business studies. So when we're doing, I think we're doing grade 11, we had the career exhibitions. So we would go to Bafukeng, Royal Sport Palace, and we'll go to Pretoria for career exhibition, TUT. So we met different people there telling us about the available careers and all of that. But uh, to be honest, I never attached myself to any career because Rustenberg is dominated by mines, so every career that is there it has to do with ge uh, geology and all of that, boilermaker, blasting, and all of that. So it requires uh, someone with physical science and, and, and mathematics. So what I did, uh, we, we were given the application forms to apply for, for, for universities. Then uh, I did took my chances to apply in other provinces, you know. Because I didn't want to go nearby like Johannesburg to study there. So I, I, I told myself, no, let me apply to Rhodes University in Walter Sisulu, this university that are outside. Luckily, I had a friend who was from Eastern Cape. By the way, my original room is Lady Fred, Eastern Cape. So I had a friend that is from this side, and he said, no, let's go to Walter Sisulu University. Then I came here as a walk in. Then I fell in love with office management and technology as my undergrad. Then I did office management and technology. Uh, when I was still studying, I volunteered as an assistant librarian. Then I was able to make money. Uh, my BTEC, I did it uh, at CPUT. I went to Cape Town. Uh, I did my BTEC. Uh, while I was there, I fell in love with academics. I did my, because in BTEC by then we were doing a mini dissertation, so I fell in love with research. I applied for masters, MTEC in business administration. Then in business administration, I did a lot of social media impact on teams and all of that. Then I got a call to be a lecturer here at Wilson University. So I came here after graduating my my master's in 2015, I came this and I started to be a lecturer. Okay. So when I did my lecturing role, I was publishing articles. So those articles, were, well, I published one of them were for conferences. So I went to different conferences. Walter Sulu paid for me. I went to Dubai, Malaysia. I went to Lima, Peru, Brazil. I went to. Cyprus, you know. So I got an exposure and I became so passionate about academics. I enrolled for PhD in computer science and information systems. So by the way, office management and technology is it a major, major subject is information administration that deals with computers, technology, technology and offices. So that's what I, 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 I did. 
yeah, up to PhD. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a lecturer, uh, but then I've recently been appointed uh, as a manager for short learning programs. So we are running a directorate of short learning program for the institution. So my office currently is reporting to the vice chancellor. Yeah, that's what we do. We run short learning programs. So the short learning programs we run are funded programs and non-funded programs. We are just a, an oversight of uh, the short learning program that are offered across Waterstone University in different in different campuses, different faculties. So we're managing uh, all all short, short learning programs and community engagement activities as well. We are managing. We are in that office. It's a it's a it's a it's an existing directorate, but newly administered by us. So we I'm appointed uh, to be to be a manager. Okay, the short learning programs uh, are the one of the third stream income for the university. The university gets money from the fees of students. The university gets money from the publications of scholars. When you are a researcher in the university, you publish. The university gets money from T-Head. University gets money with short learning programs because we get uh, maybe the CETA that wants to fund a certain program or training. It gives the university that money. And what we do, we we offer you know those short learning programs. And ideally, short learning programs are target targeted by working class people that are working. So they tend to come and pay money those companies for them to be trained. The government as well come on their personnel. They give us money to university to train their staff. So that short learning program bring a lot of money in the university. So it's part of the third stream income. My undergrad that was. Uh, mainly uh, in a commerce stream, yeah. But then you know, ending up to PhD, I found myself in a in a stream of a science. You know, uh, in terms of putting a qualification in a in a stream, it, it, I think it's a discretion of each university because you will find information systems uh, in a commerce faculty at UCT and at Nelson Mandela University. It's in a science faculty. So uh, I think it's a discussion of, of the universities and how to place the qualifications. Because when I, I look at a similar uh, thing that I'm doing, it's a commerce in, 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 at UCT. And here, it's a, it's a, and here at Nelson Mandela University, it's a, it's a science. Uh, so with regards to the requirements, I think it depends on what you are desiring as a as an undergrad or as an as an entry student when you are entering university. Otherwise, there is no uh, like a stream of subjects that are inferior than the other. You can maximize on what you want to do. Because commercial subjects have got plenty of uh, careers that you can maximize on. You know, as well as science. You know, as we we popular know that science, when you do physical science. You are the most prestigious uh, uh, student, you know. Uh, we cannot run to the fact that science students have got more advantage than commerce, but commercial students as well, they can do as as, as much as they can, you know, uh, in terms of uh, maximizing on what they want to do. The disadvantage is, is to, you know, come out of your comfort zone, coming out of your comfort zone, leaving your parents, you know, and. Uh, coming to university to be independent. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a drastic change, which some, some, some of us will not easily accept because you find yourself now being responsible of things that you are not responsible of, like making yourself groceries, you know, uh, buying yourself clothes and all of that. You know. So that's number one. You know. uh, number two, you, one of the other disadvantages is to accept you know, uh, the failure you know, uh, in, in university. Uh, but then I would reflect as my personal, you know, experience in the university. Uh, the disadvantage is not being there, the parents not being there, you know, to look and advise on, on, on certain issues, you know. But now in universities, we've got the psychological uh, units where the, the, they talk about these things, of what you're facing, the depression and all of that, you know. The other disadvantage is that uh, contributes a lot to to students especially black students 
is having money to study, you know, like availability of bursaries and, and other money to further the studies. Because, you know, I, I recently went to, to a mall and I saw my, my other friend who was studying in public relations. And I was shocked to see this guy. Well, hey, this guy is, is, a, is working as a sales person. So I really, you know, become touched and ask myself, well, what, what happened? What could be the problem? But I, I, I also got to answer myself as well to say, I think the challenge that we had as black students to further our studies. Money, money is an issue to black students. You know, uh, I was happy when they were announcing free education, the government announced free education, but money becomes a major challenge to students. Other students don't go further with their studies, maximize on other studies because the system there does not favor them. So that's a disadvantage. And one of the disadvantages I also experienced, lack of you know, money. I remember one time I was uh, doing my, I think my, my first year at university, masters. You know, I thought of giving up because I, I was really a bad at home. And I was asked by my father, hey, when are you gonna get work? Because you've been studying, 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 you know. And I told him, I want to get something better, something decent, you know. Because in commercial subjects, we are many there in the pool what the commercial subjects and the entry requirements are not that, you know, very strict, you know. So we become many and we become useless or redundant, a better word. We become redundant, you know, to companies and all of that. So I was experiencing that, you know, um, from home being asked questions, when I get work, you know. So I, I thought of giving up at some point, but, you know, I got motivation I don't know where I could not finish, but, but I would say it's God because, you know, I'm saved. It's God that kept me, you know, in that in that space. I remember this one time at Mines, they were striking. You remember the massacre of Marikan and all of that. People got killed there. And that affected other mines like Impala, uh, you know, Smelters, Lone Mill and all of other mines. So they embarked also on a strike to demand the same wage increase. So they, they they went to a strike for almost six six months, if I'm not mistaken. So I wasn't getting I wasn't getting any money from home. So I had to rely on friends, you know, where they would buy something to eat, you know, and all of that. Otherwise, money is a challenge, you know. In other way, money for funding, money for yourself, keeping yourself, you know, in, in the university environment. Okay, one of my main uh, focus in uh, computer science is data analytics. Yeah, uh, I'm in a data analytics, I'm in a citizen's relationship management, I'm in a social media intelligence, which is a part of the big data uh, analytics and social media analytics, uh, business intelligence, decision making, specifically in the context of government. Yeah, so what I do uh, in, my, in my field, I analyzed uh, data from social media. So mainly it's a social media analytics, which involves extracting data, monitoring data, you know, analyzing data and visualizing data. So my field is to analyze unstructured data, which is we call big data. So we analyze that data. We can analyze sentiments on those data. On that data, we can analyze, uh, it depends the scope of your analysis. But what I did for my PhD, I analyzed sentiments on the hashtags on Twitter, Twitter, Twitter data set. So I extract, I extract data, I monitor it using tools, social media analytics tools. So in my case, I used NVivo to monitor that data. Then I used uh, Uclassify to analyze it. Uh, I classified it uh, with the probability, you know, uh, classification and, you know, try to draw sentiments from that data. Obviously using a hashtag, you know, I used hashtag vaccine rollout and coronavirus and all of that. That's what we, we're doing and that's what I do then we can find sentiments there, whether people are positive or are negative or are neutral, you know, uh, on the particular hashtag. Because you can see a lot of debate happening on Twitter or hashtag trending, but then Tina will draw sentiments on those, on those uh, hashtags that are moving around Twitter. So that's what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I got, you know, when you are working very hard in life and when you are focused in life, you get what you deserve. There is a say that uh, says uh, uh, hard times create uh, easy times, you know. That when you're working hard, 
you create a generation that will not work as you work. When you're sweating, uh, coming generation will, will not sweat anymore. You know? uh, working very hard is because we are conscious about our background and all of that. Because I thought to myself, if I'm not working very hard, I'll remain as poor as my background. You know? Because there was no hope in my background. And if I was just studying my diploma and stay home, the, there are probabilities that I won't get a job, if you get what I mean. Or if I get that job, I will not be living a decent life like I would wish to live. You know? Yeah, it all depends on what you're wishing for and what you desire to, to become. Yeah, when you are working very hard, obviously in your mind there is a objective, some objective that I want to become something. So it pays off when you're working very hard. Yeah, I, w I would. Uh, award uh, in my field, but those who are desiring to be scholars, it, it, it is possible to be a scholar. You know, others would say uh, being a scholar is designed for uh, particular individuals, yeah. but anything you grow when you are doing it. Because now I was not born like a scholar, but I was maybe I was predestined to be a scholar. Yeah, but it is possible to be a scholar. Yeah, no doubt. If you if you focus and put your intentions very clear, you become a scholar. Yeah, being a, a scholar is it's vast. You know, you you can desire. You you do not just become a scholar, not unless you contribute to knowledge. It's either in the board of knowledge or in a real world context. In a in a board of knowledge, it's those articles that you publish, which tend to be you know cited by other scholars. Your, your articles should not just be cited by other scholars, but should contribute on addressing the problems that you are facing. You know, that is why I, I, I quote in the real world problems or context, because uh, there is a there is a, a desire uh, that is going around that, you know, uh, how we wish that our findings for research can be commercialized. You know, yeah, to to produce something out of what we're doing as research. Because research is basically not a, a pure, a merely investigation, a systematic investigation, but a research is with an intent to solve problems. We, we're facing many problems in South Africa. You know, uh, research is, is, is basically one of those solutions to solve the problems that we're facing. Because you'll see there is a great deal of innovation that is coming out of uh, South Korea, you know, China. You will just wonder what is happening, what is going on, why are we, you know, uh, at the back in terms of uh, the progress? It's because those people maximize on what they do. They do, uh, you know, commercialize their findings. They they, they do more in terms of uh, maximizing on the research outputs they are having. You see innovations; it's a, it's one of the research outputs. You see many doctors in U.S., many medicine that is coming from U.S., many laboratories are built there. And intensive research has been done, you know, to produce those kind of things, and they sell to us. You know. So we as Africa, South Africa, we need to maximize more in discovering new knowledge. We do have our indigenous knowledge, you know, but we are clueless on how to maximize it, like to commercialize on those kind of issues. Yeah, there are many things that you do, you know, you do as a scholar. Do you know that you, you're getting paid to, to publish? Yes. Yeah, do you had, uh, get, you know, Universities where you affiliate in, uh, they get to be paid by DHEAD. DHEAD paid uh, money for, uh, for, for the university, pay subsidy for the university. And some other policies in other universities, that money, 30% uh, of the money that is paid to university should come to your pocket. You know, uh, or else come to your research account where you can do more of a research. You know. And my research account have accumulated, I think, close to 200,000. 200, of the money that I get when I resign as a, as a lecturer or whatever, I can take that money and, and go with it. So it's part of the investment that you do when you're publishing articles. So it, it has many advantages because you can, you can pay, you know, the research material for, for, for doing your own personal research and all of that. Then you can start your own business and be a consultant, you know, for research, uh, you know, because many, many people are stuck, you know, in developing proposals. It's very, it's very uh, cumbersome for them to develop those kind of issues. 
but you as a scholar you can create your own you know consultancy and help those people you know to to do more in terms of uh, uh, you know being uh, achieving their their own uh, research uh, goals uh, lastly you can be a consultant also to companies because theoretical knowledge is very important to guide the policies the development of policies and other other stuff in companies because as a scholar you tend to deal with a systematic investigation as well as intellectual activities so you are there to advise for government to 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 reposition their policies they consulting scholars in universities you know to give more extensive knowledge on what they want to do or what what they want to apply so being an academic you not only servicing the students you are also doing community community engagement you also see what you are studying how can it benefit the community so you go there to make impactful your research to be impactful to the communities to the government to the businesses that are around for sustainable development those businesses need our advice as scholars to tell them on how to to do a corporate citizenship for an example how to apply management principles you know how to do a corporate social responsibilities you know how to do data analytics how can a government create an, an e participation for citizens to report their service delivery issues direct online you know not necessarily going to them uh, face to face and then interact with the people how can they do that to maximize how can they create a smart city you know where you will make sure that uh, the the transport system is is moving swiftly and with no delays there are you know uh, electronic healthcare you know uh, there is lot of things that you can develop and advise as well because what we developing here scholars it can be it can be used there in in the in the real world context as i said earlier okay what what i can advise is that you need to focus in life know what you want to do develop passion know the purpose that you you are here for on earth and when you are uh, noticing that you are passionate in doing something do it more often it will be part of your life because other people are wondering what is a purpose my definition of a purpose is you do what you like to do you know something that you see that i enjoy doing it and is bringing uh, satisfaction in my heart that is your purpose you don't do it for money if you say you become an academic just because you want money you want to academics because there are rough uh, times in academics where your articles is rejected several times and you are told that uh, this work is not quality then you become dis discouraged easily discouraged when you don't have a passion so if you want to be an academic develop passion then that will actually inform you